sometime during the presidency of uh, Joe Romero, uh, I think that was in the mid 70s, I decided what, the, what we needed was a history of the association. And uh, to do that, I, I made sure that I gathered several of the Im important uh, early members. I had a tape recorder placed, got four of them, Armand Fabella, Amado Castro, and uh, Beniting Ligarda, and we talked. From that, I, I had pieced together the memories, and I had my own memories, and uh, I put it all together. Um, I actually got to read that article and cited a few of those bits uh, during one of our annual meetings. Uh, so I was asking the group here, why is, how did Armand Fabella get to be the first president? Because of, because of it, any one of the three, Armand, Amanto Castro, and Benitin, all Harvard PhDs. And the answer was, it just happened that Armand was hosting the dinner that night. He said, "Ikaw ka lang president kasi ikaw yung hosting. Right? I remember that chapter. In the same article, another trivia, Oh, this is a propitious time for the PES because we have new young blood coming in and we have a fresh PhD who's just coming home and they would like to recommend him to be the new editor of the Philippine Economic Journal. He goes by, this young man goes by the name of Mahar Paganas. <laughs> so, uh, DJ days uh, are mainly uh, trying to find enough material to publish in the journal. But I, I'd like to uh, put here that uh, the PJ was got an award for being the best social science journal for a certain for a span of years from the Philippine Social Science Council. And they, it's not just the journal of the year, but the journal of this decade or something like that. Uh, I want to mention who I think is actually most responsible for the PSSC award, and that's Cesar Dino, the editorial assistant, because he's the cleanest editorial worker I've ever seen. You know? But I want to remember June Cutting Box's time, because it was under his time that it was decided to have a logo for the society. And I don't think it's still the logo now. This is where you have a head, and you've got a kind of a gold coin instead of a brain. It's kind of a blue and a red, that's for the flag. I eventually became the president of PS in the 1990s, and the economy was in a transition period. Uh, we were emerging from the debt crisis. We still didn't have uh, um, still had foreign exchange controls uh, at that time. And we were uh, trying to solve the energy, uh, the power crisis. So we were involved in discussions on the central bank, uh, the, the, the power crisis, and trying to transition from an IMF stabilization program to a more growth-oriented World Bank uh, program to resolve the, to re for the country to regain access to voluntary capital markets. We were uh, fortunate in PS at that time that uh, we, had, we had good access to the policymakers that were coming up. When I became president of PES, that was a time that there was a perception that uh, it was mainly the Diliman UP School of Economics economists who were dominating the PES, especially in the officers' lineup. No? So there was a deliberate uh, effort uh, during my time as uh, president of PES to, in effect, democratize, if you can call it that, the leadership as well as the membership of the Philippine Economic Society. So first, we consciously sought out other economists outside of the UP School of Economics uh, group to, again, uh, become more active members and, of course, also vie for the officership or one of the uh, officer positions of the society. The other one was that uh, we uh, sustained uh, 
this practice and in fact make good on the practice of having a quarterly regional conference. Aside from the annual convention, uh, we were faithful to having one quarterly conference outside of Metro Manila. Well, that would be the year 2012 and the BES for the BES actually was very memorable and a very busy year. Because for that year, it was the 50th anniversary of the Philippine Economic Society. And on top of that, we were also the hosts for the FAEA or the FAR, uh, the Federation rather of uh, ASEAN Economic Association uh, Network uh, Annual Conference. So we had to organize actually two conferences back to back. And uh, for that 50th anniversary uh, PES conference, we brought together uh, the founders and uh, as many presidents of the PES as we could. And um, I remember being struck that the, the, that among the presidents, the past presidents of the, of the PES, no, what struck me was how much of the policy making, both in corporate as well as, and even more so I think in government uh, economic policy making, uh, passed through the presidents of the PES. Of course, they may not have been pre pre uh, PES presidents at the time that they were holding the government post. No? Well, my term as PES president was actually uh, a time of uh, engagement. We, we desired uh, to partner with regional centers. So we were already doing that before. Kaya lang, during my time, we wanted to institutionalize it. Um, I think at that time, however, something happened. Uh, just before the annual meeting in November, Yolanda struck. So that was uh, very memorable for me as president. So we had a very sober annual meeting. But the annual meeting went through and we had a very nice uh, keynote addressed by the president of BPI, Cesar Consing. I was so surprised that uh, he also changed his keynote address to talk about the role of banking in a disaster. During my term at NEDA, uh, we're also able to insert in, the, uh, in our budget line item, uh, uh, making NEDA as a regular member, institutional member of PES, with, with uh, uh, guaranteed participation of uh, regional offices and, uh, and the economics uh, profession in, in, in NEDA. So that's in the uh, regular uh, uh, nine item of of I hope that's still there because it's uh, we can see already the quality of the papers that are have been presented in the uh, recent conferences and uh, they are reaching levels that are I would say nearing already the level of the getting to the be at par with the region not only with the region but the rest of the world we're getting there <laughs> but the thing is uh, we also have a very um, a unique situation we have we also are in a very unique situation where uh the leadership is very strong and we would like to take advantage of that very strong you know political leadership and push through with the reforms. Uh, but we still need uh, all those uh, you know, thinkers, all those, uh, uh, all those um, innovative solutions. Uh, like I said, masyado nang lumuke yung problema, and so it requires for even more creative solutions. So we're hoping that uh, you know, the PES will always be our partner, of course. Yeah.
The dilemma for me is uh, how come we have so many colleagues who are so good in economics and yet our economic uh, standing among our neighboring countries has not been too good. So I don't know if it's people, climate, geographic location, uh, but I'm sure people has a lot to do with it. Uh, I, I uh, wish people think about on the whole, we as a people together, not just uh, the uh, free market of maximizing for oneself. Given your, the organization's uh, orientation, which is to get together people of uh, similar disciplines, and I understand we're now moving into our, more than our golden jubilee, we're coming to the 55th uh, uh, period. I hope uh, you get uh, a lot of uh, colleagues interested in our country with a kind of uh, thinking that uh, they're trained for in the field of uh, optimizing and economic uh, benefits for our whole country. We have seen how it has already happened and so moving forward uh, we expect to see even more efforts to bring in, make it a more inclusive society. That means again geographically bring it further out to the regions and uh, you know, there's a growing community of very competent economists out there outside of Metro Manila. Uh, I think the role of the economist, particularly the Philippine economist, has never been so much important as it is. So in the future ahead, I guess, um, there will be more desire for the profession and that the profession will not only lend its voice but will be a, an important player in communities, in schools, in government, in private sector, and in the country in general. I think that that is still a very important um, role for the PES to continue to play. And, well, I think virtually all of the Certainly, the great majority of all the PES presidents and directors over the years have been educators then. And it's now 55 years. Um, to keep moving forward, we have to always be preparing the next generation. Today, the importance of the Philippine uh, Economic Society is the result of many things. Uh, it contributes to the leadership in the Philippine economy, not only those who have become officers, but mainly the bulk and the leaders of the society, which are really, who are really quite plentiful leaders in ideas, leaders in government, leaders in business. They have contributed and then, of course, there is the recognition that the PES has been at the, uh, at the front of this kind of development. So PES is important, uh, influential. Mm -hmm.